In this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a one-way ANOVA. I'm going to select a column type of table, and I want to enter my replicate values stacked into columns, and then click the Create button. So in this example, I'm going to pretend that I've done some genetic tests, and I have three genotypes, so I have three groups. One called AA, one called AG, and one called GG. And what I've done is basically measured at what age each of these genotypes contracts a certain disease we'll call disease X. So this is, I'm going to paste some data in here. So these are ages in years. So what I want to do is perform a one-way ANOVA to compare the means of group A, B, and C to see if there's any difference between the group means. Now to perform a one-way ANOVA, you have to go to Analyze. Under the Column Analyses header, you want to select one-way ANOVA, brackets, and non-parametric. All my data is already ticked to be included in the analysis, so I'm going to leave this, and then I'm going to click the OK button. So in the next window, I'm going to keep the experimental design as no matching or pairing. Basically, if I wanted to do a repeated measures ANOVA, you would select that each row represents a matched or repeated measures data. But in this case, they're from three individual groups. I'm going to assume the data it represents from a Gaussian distribution to do a one-way ANOVA. If it doesn't, you would select no here to do the non-parametric version. At the top here, this sub-tab called multiple comparisons, I'm going to click on this. So these are where you can select follow-up tests, otherwise known as post hoc tests. So essentially, if your one-way ANOVA comes up with a significant difference, that means there is at least one significant difference within your comparisons. But the, the issue being is, you don't know where that significance lies. For example, I wouldn't know whether AA is different to AG or GG. So this is where you would do post hoc tests. So what I'm going to do is select the second option. Compare the mean of each column with the mean of every other column. If you had a control group, um, you can actually select this option here to compare the mean of each column with the mean of a certain control and you would specify which column is the control group, but I'm going to select this second option. So now when you go to the options tab at the top, you'll be able to select a post hoc test. Basically, when you do multiple comparisons, you want to control the, the number of tests that you're performing. The more tests you do, the more type one error you could actually introduce. So to limit this, you select a, a correction method and the, the recommended is by using two key adjustments. I click the drop down here, you can see another common one is Bonferroni, and you also have SIDEC. I'm going to leave it as two key for the time being. If you wanted to control by the false discovery rate, you can do so by clicking this here. Or if you don't want to control for multiple comparisons, you would leave this option here tick, but I don't recommend doing that. I'm going to leave everything as default. The main thing is that this one here that's ticked where it says report multiplicity adjusted p-values for each comparison. That means the p-value that will be reported is adjusted for the multiple comparisons. And then at the bottom, I'm going to change the output style to APA format. And I'm going to click OK to run the ANOVA test. So the first thing you should realize is I now have a variety of different results sheet generated from this test. The first one is the, the results from the actual ANOVA itself. And GraphPad generates a separate result sheet for the post hoc tests. So let's firstly go over the actual ANOVA test itself. So in the result sheet here, it's specifying which data set was analyzed. So this was data set one, indicated here. It's telling you what group are in what column. So again, I'm doing differences in ages between three genotypes. So AA, AG, C and GG. Underneath here, we actually have our ANOVA summary. So this is the one way ANOVA results. So we've got our F statistic here, which is the ANOVA test statistic. The higher this statistic indicates uh, a higher significant test. As you can see here, the p-value reported is less than 0 0.001, which is a very significant difference. And this is summarized by the APA style of three asterisks. The next row uh, is stating, is there a difference among the different groups in terms of the means? 
and yes there is and this is the r squared so this represents the amount of variation between the three data sets in other words there is an 87 percent variation explained by this this analysis next underneath we have the two f tests in other words, these tests uh, deduce whether the groups within your analysis have the same variation between them. So the first one is called the brown foresight test. And what we have is the F value here with the degrees of freedom in brackets, the P value. In this case, this is 0 0.703. So because this is above 0 0.05, that means the amount of variation within our three groups is equal. So the test is not significant and therefore the standard deviations are the same. So they're not significantly different from each other. So when you have more than five data points in each group, GraphPad will also perform the Bartlett's test. The Bartlett's test is not actually recommended by GraphPad itself, but I'll just quickly go over that. So you've got the statistic itself, uh, which is similar to the, the F statistic uh, in the brown four sides test. The, the p-value, which again is in agreement with the, the above test. The p-value summary, and then again, it's just stating that our standard deviations are not significantly different from each other. And then if we scroll down, we get some more results from analyses. And the, in the ANOVA table itself, uh, you don't really need to go into this in much detail. It's just telling you about the different effects of the residuals and the treatment. And lastly, you've got just a summary of the analysis itself. So how many number of columns or treatments were there? In this case, there were three. And then the number of values. So in total, I had six in each group. So this would be 18. Let's now go over the post hoc tests by it. So if we go onto the results section on the side and then click on the multiple comparisons sheet. So this is where all the post hoc tests are summarized. So at the top here, we've just got some basic information, how many comparisons were in the, the test itself. So we've got three. Our alpha level was set at 0 0.05, which is standard. And then here we've got the results for our two key multiple comparison tests. So let's go over this. So as you'll see here, it's separated into the different combinations of analysis. You can have, because we've got three groups, you could have three different comparisons. You could have AA versus AG, AA versus GG, and AG versus GG. It's their three different tests. And what it, GraphPad does is it reports each individual one in a separate analysis. Essentially, it's like doing an independent t-test between them, but we're also controlling for this multiple comparisons. So let's take the AA versus AG comparison. We've got the mean difference of the values here. So specifically, this would be the difference in ages when they got this disease X. The 95% confidence intervals for that difference. We've got a reported, so was this different between AA and AG? Yes, it was. And this is summarized as three asterisks or a very significant p-value of less than 0 0.001. And then lastly, it's just telling you which columns were compared. So you've got A to B. And this is repeated for the three different tests. So what we can see here is that there is a significant difference between the ages at when they got disease X between genotypes AA and AG. And also in the one below, which is AA and GG. But when you compare AG versus GG, this is not significant because our p-value is 0 0.318. Lastly, we have the test details. So this is just information about the comparisons themselves here. So what you've got is, again, similar to the, the multiple comparisons, it's separated into three different analysis. If we take AA versus AG firstly, what we have is the mean one. So this is the mean of column A. In this case, it was AA and the mean of AG for the second column, the mean difference, the standard error of the difference, the end number in the first column, which was six, and the end number in the second column, which was, sec uh, which was six also. GraphPad also computes a, a Q value for each one, and then it's giving you the degrees of freedom in each one. So that is how you perform a one-way and over in GraphPad.